Good morning, guys. Good, mo uh, good morning, Omar. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Let me know if you can hear me or if you're not able to hear me, please let me know. I'm just making sure the audio is coming through. We'll get started here in just one minute. Hello, Vanessa. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Ale, Lizzie. Hello. Hi, good morning. Good morning, teacher. Hello, Lizzie. We'll get started here in just, just a sec. If uh, anyone has uploaded uh, paragraphs to the virtual classroom, go ahead and take a look, um, if you haven't already, to some of my comments. Uh, today, we're going to have time to discuss those one-on-one -on -one if if need be and we can also discuss things as a group if if we need to um let me see here let me check uh, okay I'm trying to get a class notebook set up here really quickly so that we can kind of look to i wanted to put together some notes some ideas kind of kind of a summary as to what we need to try to include in our first draft that's gonna be due this Saturday, right? So uh, many of us are working on and sharing our body paragraphs, which I encourage everyone to do. Um, so, uh, some of you have been doing so, and that's great. I've been trying to give you guys uh, feedback as you write and develop each of your body paragraphs. I think this is the best way to approach the first draft, especially when we're developing complicated arguments like what we're doing, trying to introduce counter arguments and rebuttals in order to provide a better overall argument. Okay, so this is not, it's not easy to do. So uh, I think it's gonna require us to work closely together. Um, I, I hope that uh, the rest of you can upload something, at least one paragraph by today. Uh, so that I can, again, we can have that uh, conversation. We can have that back and forth. You can receive some feedback so that you have kind of a, a better idea to uh, how to approach your own personal uh, paragraph for your particular overall argument. I mean, it's one thing to look at some of the feedback that I'm providing your classmates. And again, I think you can benefit from doing so. This is one of the reasons why I want to have an open forum so that you can see the feedback that I provide your classmates, but it's still not the same as receiving feedback on your own personal work, all right? So it's very uh, much going to be dependent on your own personal writing style and your own approach to writing your own arguments. And so again, I encourage all of you who have not uploaded yet your body paragraphs, try to upload at least one today today's thursday um, and since our due date is going to be saturday i'm going to ask after tomorrow basically after today i should say after today thursday uh we're we're going to focus mainly on trying to complete our first draft and there's not going to be a lot of time for us you and me to uh to make final changes or to receive feedback from me after after today so today is going to be the last day to ask for feedback um, so again, I think the best way to do that is to upload a, at least one paragraph to the virtual classroom, preferably today, so that I can provide feedback and give you time to, to ask questions about my feedback. And we can do, certainly do that tomorrow in class. And if, um, if we need to, I'm saying today's Thursday, right? Today's Friday. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So today, yeah, so today's Friday. <laughs> Um, time flies when you're having fun, right? So yeah, today's Friday. <laughs> today's Friday. So just forget about the last uh, two, three minutes that uh, what I've been saying. Um, no, but yeah, so yeah, tomorrow's going to be our due date and to finish our first draft. So because we're, we don't have a lot of time, I'd like for us to focus on trying to complete our first draft. And um, 
if you guys have questions and want to discuss your work, I, I can have I can schedule some time today to discuss it. But I would ask that if you want me to look at it, it's it's going to be tough to try to give you feedback uh, asynchronously. Like if you leave me a message and I don't know an hour or two later I see the message and then I provide the feedback and then maybe one or two hours later you see my feedback and then you're rushed to try to complete. I d I don't I want to try to avoid that scenario. So. Uh, because today's Friday and our due date's tomorrow, then I'm going to ask um, that, again, if you have uh, some questions and you want to discuss it, send me a chat in Microsoft Teams. We can schedule a chat and we can discuss it to work out any specifics about your own writing. All right. So because okay, tomorrow... Yes. For tomorrow, that is the deadline for the first draft. Do we have to have uh, the five paragraphs of the essay? Yes, yeah, so that's what I wanted to discuss here. And let me turn down my volume here one second. It might be. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, let me share my screen, guys. And I want to summarize briefly what we need to include in our first draft. And this is going to be similar, in fact, identical to what uh, you were expected to complete as a first draft in unit one for your, per, your persuasive essay. But I, it's important to review again what we need to include. So you guys tell me, what do we need to include in our first draft? What do you think? Any ideas what we need to include in our first draft? The five paragraphs. <laughs> five paragraphs, very good, very, five paragraphs. And hold on one second. My volume really is super loud and I, for some reason I can't. Okay. I'm not sure why what the deal is here. Well, okay, we'll make the best of it. All right, so you need to make sure you have five paragraphs. Okay, so you need to have an introduction paragraph. And so you need to have five paragraphs. So we need an intro, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. So in the introduction paragraph, what should we include in the introduction paragraph? Uh, background information. Okay. And what do you think, what should we... Inter what should we include before the background information? If we're gonna okay, all right. So we're gonna have a hook. We're gonna have background information, and then what's the third thing we need to include in the introduction? The thesis statement. The thesis statement. That's right. So here in the hook, remember we have three different ways that we can hook the audience. What are the three different ways that we can begin our introduction paragraph to really grab the attention of our audience? A famous quote. Okay, famous quote. What else? It's another way we can hook our audience to grab the attention right off the bat, right at the beginning. What's another way we can hook our audience? Besides a famous quote. Totally presenting. Uh, sorry, could you repeat that again, Elizabeth? 
including information like statistics. Okay, so an, an important fact or statistic. Now, this is the only type of hook that you're going to require both a citation and a reference. All right, so, all right, I'm going to ask one of you guys if you're getting some feedback. I don't know if it's just on my end, but if you wouldn't mind, please uh, muting your microphone. If you're not get, if you're not going to speak, so sorry, Mike. I'm going to have to mute you there. Go ahead and unmute your mic if you want to jump in and uh, say something. Okay. All right. So the the famous quote, the fact or statistic, is the only one where we're going to have or require a citation and reference. Okay. So this will be the only one. Uh, an important factor statistic should be something really uh, important, really impactful, something surprising. Um, it should be something really just something that's probably not common knowledge that really few people know about a, a particular topic. And what's the third way? Well, we can pose a question. Okay, so these are three ways that we can hook our audience. So now remember that the background is actually related to the problem. So please, in your notes, make sure that in your introduction paragraph, you're, you're introducing the background, but specifically, you're providing context of the problem. Remember that this argumentative essay is also, in many ways, a problem and a solution essay. That is, the problem is going to be introduced in the introduction. You need to have at least one citation in your introduction paragraph and that citation should apply to the background so or the context of the problem so at least one citation to support the context of the problem now if you have an important fact or statistic at the beginning to hook your audience then you're going to have at least two citations in your introduction paragraph one for the to support the fact and statistic and one to support the background so the, the logic here is that you guys are having a reason, you're having a problem with support, with evidence, that there is a problem that's worth basically talking about. And your thesis statement is going to be now the solution to that problem in one sentence. All right, so in your thesis statement, make sure that you have a topic, you have an opinion, and you have your three points. Also make sure to begin your thesis statement with a transition. Transi a transition might be a sentence connector. It might be an introductory phrase. It might be a subordinating. Subordinating clause. All right. So the first draft should have an introduction and you should have essentially these components, this, this information, all right? To get credit, your introduction paragraph should have these, these points, all right? So moving on here, I don't know if I can, there we go. All right, so we've got our thesis, we've got an introduction paragraph. Now we need our body paragraphs. So what should you include in your body paragraphs? Well, there should be an identifiable topic sentence. Now, I'm not expecting a perfect first draft. So if there are issues about your topic sentence that still need to be addressed, that's fine. But you need to have, in some form, a topic sentence at the beginning of your, uh, your body paragraph. All right, this is where those of you who have been sharing your paragraphs in the virtual classroom are really gonna be at a, an advantage, regardless of whether or not it's a, you've got it perfectly written out at this point or not, because I can, I can tell you everyone who's uploaded a paragraph has, has a topic sentence. It may not be perfect, but they have a topic sentence for, for, uh, for getting credit for the first draft. All right, so 
Here, you need to have supporting sentences. that follow the meal plan. Now, let me explain what I mean here. And this is, again, for credit, uh, for receiving credit for the first draft for the meal plan. What I do, and this is the same thing that you can do, I can look and I can glance at a paragraph and in about 15 seconds determine if they follow the meal plan. And you can do the same thing. I'm not looking at necessarily the content as I am the organization or the order in which you're including your citations. For example, if I see a body paragraph with a citation as the first sentence or the last sentence, I know there's something not following the meal plan. There's something wrong there. If I see that the second sentence of your body paragraph does not have a citation, then I know there's something not quite right. If I see that there's a citation as this, at the second to the last sentence, that is, there's a, at the end of the paragraph, there's a citation, and then there's one more paragraph, I'm, I'm one more sentence, then I know there's, there's something out of order or there's something missing. You guys do the same thing. Just take a glance at your, your body paragraphs. You know the acceptable and non-acceptable ways to include a meal plan. This is where, remember when we did these examples in class? We said, okay, that's good. How about this one? M-A. Okay, that's okay. You might even have this. Okay, that's fine. But then we saw some examples like this. And some of you correctly said, no, that doesn't work. Or how about this? No, well, that doesn't work. But sometimes I see this. Right? And does that work? No. Nope. What are we missing? We're missing an analysis after the evidence. This is where this is an example of having a citation and then one more sentence. And then we determine, well, there's something missing either. Either this last sentence is L or A, right? But we're missing something else. We're missing one uh, additional type of sentence. All right, so you can check this very easily, right? And see whether or not you're following the right order in which you're presenting these different types of sentences according to the meal plan, okay? That's basically it for, for the first for the first uh, draft in terms of the body paragraph. And we've got your conclusion paragraph. And the conclusion paragraph should include three things. What are those three things? The reward, the reward in the beginning of the paragraph. Okay, so we restate and reword the thesis statement. So we're going to say exactly the same thing, the same idea as we said in our introduction paragraph. We're going to restate it. We're going to reword it, but say the same thing. And we're going to begin the, the conclusion paragraph. This is going to be the first sentence of the conclusion paragraph to basically summarize what, what the main idea of our, our uh, essay is. Okay, followed by... The significance. The significance. Remember when you guys completed your um, your problem statement? That was one of the first, if not, it was the first assignment really that we did in both of our our essays, right? I wish to learn more about because I want to know how something happens, so that remember that section. So that well, that is the significance. So in the conclusion paragraph, you're going, you're going to explain slightly more in slightly more detail, maybe three to five sentences. You're going to expand on the significance that you stated in your problem statement, or perhaps you need to state it even more specifically, right, in, in greater detail. But think of your target audience. 
Who's going to benefit the most having read your argumentative essay? Who are you trying to convince and change their mind, right, related to your, your argument? And really pay close attention to who's going to be the key, the target audience, and that's going to help you think of developing your significance because this is related to your target audience. And in some, in many ways, it's related to the problem that you introduced in the introduction, right? But this, this is where you can describe the relevance. What's the big picture? How does this relate to the bigger, the bigger picture, right? And, and how can your target audience really, what can they take away from this, this, uh, the, your thesis, basically your thesis statement. And then the last is a closing statement. We want to have a very, just a kind of, a, we want to put a bow on it, as they say. We want to close the uh, whole essay with a closing statement, with some closing idea. Now, this can be something that you create yourself. Sometimes uh, writers will use uh, an, a, faint, a quote, right, to close. Sometimes quotes can be used to introduce the essay. They can also be used to conclude an essay. All right, so essentially, this is what we need to try to achieve for our first draft in terms of citations. At least one in each paragraph, except for the conclusion. We need to have at least five references. All, all of which should be peer review journal articles. Remember that the, the journal articles, these, are, these all should be studies. They should be research studies that have uh, a conclusion, they have findings, they have results, because these are the results that that you can rely on. These are the, this is the good information. This is the level of detail that you need to provide in your own evidence. A lot of the feedback that I've been providing you guys this week is asking you guys to take a look at trying to find more specific types of evidence, right? From these articles. I know that in the articles, there's a lot of different types of information. There's general information. There's, there's specific information, but try to find the results of the study and their interpretation of those specific results. They're doing the same thing that you're doing. They just did it at a bigger, at a grander scale. They have to present evidence, which in their case is the study. You're not doing research study, a research study, but it's the same idea. They have findings, they have details, they have, they collected data and they actually have results. And then what else do they do? Well, they describe those results. They explain what those results mean. This is the same thing you're asked to do, you're, but you're asked to provide evidence from someone else, not, not your own research. But the idea is the same. You want that level of detail, those results, those statistics, bring those into your, into your, your essay as evidence, and then you comment, you explain why this is important. You explain why this is relevant to your overall argument, how this connects to the topic sentence, how this even connects back to the thesis statement, All right? So this is what, uh, what many of our conversations this week have been about, those of you who have uploaded to the virtual classroom, All right? So citations, we need to have at least five references and citations probably, I would say at least six, right? Because we have to have at least one in each paragraph. That's four. And two more, at least in, in two of the additional paragraphs of the body paragraphs, I think is reasonable, given that we have basically three different arguments, three different uh, claims, basically. The initial claim, the counterclaim, and the rebuttal. So citations, citations at least six. All right, so basically, 
this is what we need to include for uh, completing the first draft. Uh, try to include a title. I mean, if you don't have a title, I'm, I'm st still going to give you credit, but uh, be thinking of a title. And we can talk more about it next week if we need to, but a title is going to have six to 12 words. And it should include the, the main idea of, obviously, of your, of your essay. When you upload your assignment, let me go to our virtual classroom. Make sure you've signed in if you haven't already uh, today for attendance purposes. But here is your assignment. And I'm going to ask that you upload a file, a Word document for this assignment. So you're, all of you are working in a shared Word online document. Just download it to your local computer and then upload it as a file to this assignment and again we'll have until the end of tomorrow to complete the first draft do we have or do we need to have in the word document uh i would like yes i would like for you to upload a word document as an attachment to this uh to this uh assignment so it's not it, you, you're not going to copy and paste anything. You're going to down. You're going to upload a Word document uh, to this assignment for your first draft. Yeah, but what I mean is like if you need double spacing and the characteristics of the document. All right, for the first draft, uh, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm certainly going to be looking for that, and for our final draft, we need to have that. And I encourage everyone that you you know what the format is. We've talked about it at nauseum. What how the spaces should should be. So try to get as close as you can to the format for uh, for spacing. I'm not going to count off on that for the first draft, but of course this will be taken into consideration for the final draft. Um, but so yeah, you. Just take a look at the, the spacing, equal spacing between paragraphs and headings, double space overall, no extra space between paragraphs. And, um, but I, I plan on going into that again next week more for the, for the final, final draft. Teacher, do we need to have a cover page? Um, I was looking at that and I, I don't think I shared with you guys the template. All right. So, uh, if you have the template, use it. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. I, I kind of messed up when I transitioned from Schoology over to the, uh, the Moodle platform. So I don't know if I shared with you guys the template or not. Um, you know, if you can use it, I think that's, you're better off trying to use it, but you know. It's either way. I'll, I'm not going to count off if you if you don't use the template. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Any other questions, guys, about uh, basically anything that we've been working on thus far? Any questions, guys? Um, I just noticed. Did you guys see, were, were, did you see my screen when I created the notes when we went over the the first draft, what to include in the first draft? Because I just noticed my screen wasn't shared, and I thought my screen was shared. No, you weren't sharing your. No, teacher. Oops. Oops. I was actually Oops. going to ask you right. where to find it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys just stop me if I, if I'm, if, you know, if you think I'm supposed to be sharing my screen, just interrupt me, stop me and say, Hey, I don't see anything. So, okay. So here is the, the summary basically of what we just talked about and what I just talked about. Um, you can find this in the class notebook 
in uh, Microsoft Teams. I'll, obviously, this session is being recorded. So when I record it, you can also go back and look at, and pause the video if you need to. Um, but basically, here is a rundown of everything that we just discussed. Teacher. Yes. This is to do the. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, can you repeat that? Sorry, you're cutting out a little bit. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, sure, teacher. Um, the essay needs to include a portada. No, the, the, that's what I was mentioning before. Like I made a mistake when I was moving information from Schoology over to Moodle. And I don't know, I don't think I shared with you guys the template uh, when I opened up your own Word documents. Um, I think I did share the template somewhere else in Moodle. Uh, let me see here. Let me just go back to the main page and uh, yeah, I yeah, don't worry about it, guys. I I didn't include it um, in the 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 file that I shared with you for this unit. Okay, so don't worry about it. If you have the 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 template and you want to use it, that's fine. But I'm not going to mark off uh, points for not using it. Um, I think it's a template that. I'm trying to encourage all students to use for all essays for regardless of uh, you know what class that you're you're doing just because I think it's a good way to um, it's a good guide to look at and refer to when submitting your assignments but um, I didn't include it in the unit three so don't worry about having a, a header a heading page or a title page for your assignment for this for this particular assignment for unit three. Okay, teacher. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, guys? No, teacher. All right. So uh, we've still got about 20 minutes or so left. I want to leave this time to answer any specific questions. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, but I'll be here if you want any. If anyone wants uh, wants me to, to look at something. I think there were a few cases where I asked some of you to ask me in class about certain aspects about your writing. So uh, if you want to ask me about it and if you need further clarification about any of the feedback that I provided you guys, uh, now's a good time uh, to discuss that. Okay, so if you haven't, again, uploaded anything uh, to the paragraph, if you have something today, even if it's just a body, uh, uh, basically a topic sentence and evidence this first forum is was uh, the purpose of this is to just help you align your evidence to your topic sentence because really that's basically what I've been spending most of my time uh, discussing for those of you who have uploaded your paragraph is basically just looking at the evidence in terms of your topic sentences and trying to help you organize your ideas about how specific it needs to be and the organization or the order in which you present your evidence within your specific paragraph. All right, so even if you can upload something there in the first forum, uh, you know, that will be something that I would recommend, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and mute my mic, guys. So yeah, just let me know if, you want, if anybody has questions. Okay, guys, are you still able to access uh, the virtual classroom? I'm not sure if it's just me, but I got kicked out and I'm not able to get in. Are you guys able to enter into the classroom? 
Yes, teacher. Yes. Are you guys able to hear me? Okay. Yes. 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 yes teacher. But I think you can't hear us. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can. Oh, you can't hear me. Okay, can you get into the uh, virtual classroom? Because perhaps it's just me, but I, for some reason I'm not able to. Okay. Oh, it looks like I just got in. Okay, it was just, I guess, run kind of slow here. All right, well, guys, I think we'll stop there if there are no more questions. If you have serious concerns and want to speak with me outside of class, feel free to send me a chat. Otherwise, I'll be looking for your final drafts by Saturday. Next week, we'll begin the week as we did uh, in Unit 1. We'll have some opportunities to work together, checking our own work. I'll have a list of things to look at and consider at that point uh, as we begin next week to uh, finalize our drafts for our argumentative essay. All right, guys, we'll have a good weekend, and we'll see you guys on Monday. Okay, teacher, bye. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.